Welcome to DIY Guitar Making. Here at Eric Schaefer Guitars, I'm working on guitar number 106 for David in California. This is a commissioned build. And if you guys have been following along with this one, you know that what I'm about to show you is my bracing patterns. I've installed the braces on the back and on the top. So I'm ready to do some carving here. Let's go ahead and talk about, first of all, what I did to get these on here. And then I think I'll talk a little bit about the bracing pattern itself and what its purpose is. When we last left off with the back, as far as what I did, there's not much else to say here because in the last episode, I showed you how I had made this lattice right here in the middle. And yesterday, all I did to the back was I simply added these transverse braces right here that connect uh, the, the lower and the upper arms of the lattice. So I won't speak much more about that except just to show you how cool that looks since we've already talked about that modified lattice bracing pattern in the last one. We'll talk a little bit more about this. This is what the bulk of my day was. So in this case here, my brace wood is Western Red Cedar, which is Thuja Plicata. I always have an attitude of impartiality towards species when it comes to brace wood and top wood, especially. I kind of carry that attitude throughout guitar making to a certain degree, but I'm less interested in the name of the wood, the species, than I am in the quality that I can get within a given set of woods that luthiers typically use, okay? So I'm not gonna apply this to like balsa wood or something like that because there just isn't great balsa wood for this type of work. So I'm limited to various spruces and cedars essentially, more or less. And so I used Western red cedar on here because that was the best stock that I could find and the best stock that I had available here at the shop as well. Um, if I had better Sitka spruce, I would use that. So this is actually a Sitka spruce top, actually. So Sitka spruce top, Western red cedar brace wood on the inside. Uh, functionally, as far as the, not functionally, but um, workability wise, the difference between Western red cedar and Sitka spruce is that Western red cedar is a lot more brittle. So you just have to be aware of that when you're cutting, say your lap joint, and later on today when I'm carving these braces. it wants to, the chisel wants to wedge itself under a grain line more so than it does with the Sitka spruce. It wants to tear along that grain. So I sourced my Western Red Cedar from various billets, sort of like this one that I have right here, just as an example. And I radiused all the braces, as I've talked about on different episodes of DIY Guitar Making, I radius all of the braces on the top, um, including the upper bout braces, which a lot of luthiers will leave flat, but we won't get into that. So I radius all the braces, and the first thing I work on after radiusing all the braces is cutting this lap joint for the X brace. Okay, a lap joint is like two interlocking notches on each X brace arm. And so the X brace arms lock together like that, uh, I always give a little final sanding on the X-brace arms as a unit. I sand those two pieces together to get that final mate between the soundboard and the X-brace just perfect. And then I glue the X-brace down first because everything else is going to be fitted against the X-brace. So procedurally, it makes sense to get the X-brace on there first and then start fitting your other braces. So I do the X-brace, then I'll do the bridge plate, then I'll do the tone bars, then the finger braces, then the sound hole braces up here, the transverse bar, and lastly, the fretboard graft. Okay, also during that process, I install the most important gram of wood on the entire bracing pattern. That's what Irvin Samaji calls this, and that is this little cap here that goes over the joint. Okay, it's a very small, thin piece of wood, 
but it's just an, enough to bridge over that joint, which restores the strength to this X brace arm. Okay, this X brace arm, because a notch was cut right in the center, a notch that uh, runs about halfway down the height of it, that significantly weakens this X brace arm, so you can restore the strength to it by simply putting a cap over the top. It restores that full height to the brace, and height is strength, according to the cube rule, uh, which we follow for braces, okay? Cube rule, just to remind you guys, is basically that by a factor of three, our braces are strong, get their strength from their height rather than from their width, which is why we always want the braces to be tall and skinny, not short and wide. A couple more interesting things about this. The bridge plate is maple because it's a hard bearing surface for the ball ends of the strings. It's the only thing in here that isn't a soft wood. And another function that the bridge plate has is it spreads out and distributes the torque from the bridge just a little bit, which is why you always see the bridge plate a little bit wider or larger of a footprint than the bridge itself. Okay, and what I wanna do now is just in very broad terms, see if I can impart you guys with a general understanding of the purpose of all the various elements of our X brace here, okay? So let's start first from the assumption that what we want to do is add more bass response to our plate. And the reason I'm starting with that assumption is because we are building a steel string guitar, okay? If we were building a nylon strung classical guitar, we would have a different problem to solve. Nylon strings sound inherently warm, mellow, bassy. They have an inherent bass response to them where if you don't fight that bass response, and you encourage that bass response, you will actually get a, an instrument that sounds too muddy, too bassy, right? So we're trying to add treble to a classical guitar. Opposite with a steel string guitar, we are trying to add bass because the strings are made of metal and it's not too much of a leap of the imagination to imagine what metal sounds like, right? It's bright, it's brash, it's treble response. So we're fighting the trebles by adding bass. How do we get bass? You get bass by encouraging what's called monopole action, okay? I'm doing this because monopole action is like a pumping of the plate, a unitary motion. The plate moves as one and pumps up and down. There are three different modes that the plate can move in and in a real world scenario, it's always moving in all three uh, in certain proportions. You're never gonna have 100% monopole action. Uh, you just wanna encourage the plate to move more in that mode than in the other two modes. So before I completely lose you here, let me explain what those three modes are and I think this will start to make sense. So I already mentioned monopole is that pumping. There's cross dipole and there's long dipole, or the other two, okay? Cross dipole, here's the bridge. This The bridge is the epicenter of all of our action here, right? Because that's the strings immediately excite the bridge area. So cross dipole is a fluttering side to side along the axis of the bridge, just like that, okay? Long dipole is the opposite. It's a fluttering along this axis. So if you vibrate a body from a given point, in this case, the point is right here, you are going to have some combination of a uniform pumping all together like that, a fluttering side to side, and a fluttering this way. Each one of those modes has a different response that's associated with it. Monopole, that pumping, is bass response. Cross dipole is treble. Long dipole is, uh, and it's a little more complicated than this, by the way, I'm trying to keep this simple, so 
you know, you if you if you guys are familiar with this, you might be you might be thinking of some of the other things like projection that is also encouraged by certain modes. Don't worry about that. I'm trying to keep this simple. Okay. I don't want to lose you guys here. Uh, so with that said, I I'm going to move on from the the modes there, but just understand we want bass. An optimal steel string guitar, in order to get to a good sound, we need to encourage bass response. If we encourage treble, for example, we'll be going in the opposite direction. If I wanted to encourage cross dipole, what I would do is fan bracing, which is what you see in a classical guitar, because a classical guitar, like I mentioned, is trying to encourage the trebles, so it wants to encourage cross dipole. The reason that fan bracing encourages this fluttering side to side action is because those stiff braces are in more or less a longitudinal direction, so they're stiffening it along the long dipole axis, which forces that motion, that energy from the string has to go somewhere, so it goes into cross dipole. To get monopole, what we need to do is evenly reinforce the plate in both the cross dipole and the long dipole. Again, that energy has to go somewhere, so if we stiffen up both directions, it's forced to pump. It can't flutter side to side, at least not 100%, and it can't flutter longitudinally, at least not 100%, so it pumps. Already, you're, you can start to at least imagine how this bracing pattern encourages bass response because you can see it's supporting the plate more or less in both directions evenly. What we're also trying to achieve with this bracing pattern is an even distribution of stiffness. So if you look at this pattern, you'll notice that it's pretty evenly distributed. You have your X, and then these finger braces coming out here are like little capillaries coming off of the main artery, which is the X. And those little capillaries are reaching out into what would otherwise be a completely unreinforced area. And if we, had, if we didn't have these braces here and here, then that would actually encourage those other fluttering motions because you would have areas of extreme stiffness adjacent to areas of extreme looseness, of far less stiffness. So what, what we're trying to do with the finger braces is actually reach out like little fingers and take some of the stiffness of the X brace and distribute it out into these empty areas. And it's the same with the tone bars, although the tone bars also have the added benefit, uh, which I'm not really gonna get into, but they are very helpful. They get the name tone bars because they're very helpful when it comes to voicing the guitar. All right, so with all that background information in mind, let me talk a little bit about what these braces are doing. So the X brace, and the transverse bar are our, our only structural braces in here. So they are supporting the guitar against the forces that want to fold this top like a taco. And that is why the ends of these braces all tuck into the structure of the sides. The sound hole braces, while supporting the, this giant hole here, which is a bit of a liability, while supporting that, they also connect the X brace up to the transverse bar. So this massive structure here is now connected to this structure, which gives structure to both of those at once. And as I mentioned before, the finger braces and the tone bars are not structural at all, and they are just reaching out and distributing the stiffness from the main artery here out into the adjacent areas. And that is in broad strokes there. We already talked about the bridge plate. That's what this pattern is doing. So hopefully for some of you guys, this gives you a different way of looking at the X brace. All right, I'm gonna go ahead, speaking of carving braces, I'm gonna go ahead and get started doing exactly that. This is one of those things in a build that I really look forward to doing. So this is going to be an exciting day because I can work on both of these. Uh, not sure if I'll choose one over the other to get done first 
or maybe I'll get them both done if I really get moving today, but we'll see. And you guys will see in the next video. All right, without further ado, bye for now. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.